starting to think about reduction strategies. So up until now, or you know, and this morning anyway, we were all about measuring, right? And now we're shifting, you know, thinking about that mantra, measure, reduce, and then, you know, maybe offset. We're thinking about reductions. And um, I think as I mentioned in the, in the beginning here, we're, we're hoping to sort of expose you to a bunch of different ideas in several different areas of, of reduction strategies. And we'll move through them pretty quickly just to kind of, you know, uh, sort of a brainstorm. But before we, before we start that, if I could ask each of you just to take a minute and jot down your own list of where coming in and given you know, what we've learned today or what you've already been thinking about, where do you think your best opportunities lie to, to make emissions reductions in your, own, in your own company right now? And I'll just give you a minute. We'll just do it, we'll do it quick. We'll just have a quick brainstorm. And then you have a list to edit from and add to as we roll, as we roll through these examples. And we'll start to roll through some, th some ideas and, and areas. <clears throat> And starting with building efficiency and thinking about, we can think about this in terms of behavior change, technology, and sometimes we can think about it also in terms of changing our processes or our workflow. Um, and there's, there's what we call, I'm sure you, you, know, you may use this term too, sort of the low-hanging fruit, the low-cost or no-cost solutions, often where behavior change comes in. <clears throat> and then worthwhile investments, where there might be some capital involved. If we think about, if you're, if you're in a manufacturing plant, um, or a processing plant. This may, may be quite different. When we're working with offices and we think about that office space, it's empty about 75% of the time. If we can take into account evenings and weekends, it's sitting there empty, often with lights on and computers running and copiers ready to print. So basic, basic steps are a turn it off campaign and start to engage your, your employees um, using technology software to uh, energy settings on computers. More and more of that equipment and, and those tools are, are built into our, our computers, but making sure that our, our equipment is set to go to sleep when we're not using it. So pretty simple stuff. And then we can look at <clears throat> lighting retrofits. And I know Jennifer later is going to speak to some of the resources available to you locally through your utilities and um, through partners in Project Green programs to start um, thinking about where your opportunities are specifically for you. Um, and then, you know, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, simple things. Installing a programmable thermostat or the very, the very low-tech solution if you're in a smaller office is appointing somebody to be the person to turn it down and up when they come in in the morning. Um, insulating, uh, you know, looking at the quality of your windows in your building, your weather stripping, the stuff that we've heard about as um, in our homes as well applies also to our buildings. And if you're in a bigger facility and you're working in a plant, there are many more opportunities to think about what are the processes, what are the, what's the equipment we're using, where are, uh, where are opportunities, and they'll be fairly specific to your business, no doubt. Um, one quick example, the YWCA... Uh, runs a social enterprise, a hotel and residence um, in Vancouver, and they use this as kind of a pilot. Um, and where they gained a uh, huge benefit is, uh, is a technology, and it's specifically beneficial in BC in terms of emission reductions. It allowed them to switch from, you know, that district heat I was describing to you earlier, where they purchase steam that's been created um, at a central plant by, by firing natural gas. They installed some equipment that allowed them only to use that in really peak hours or when guests are waking up and having showers in the morning or on very cold days. And the rest of the time, they're pulling from the grid. And as we mentioned, our grid is, um, you know, is fairly low carbon intensity because it's, it's hydroelectricity. They combined that with lighting retrofits and building in efficiencies and doing a whole bunch around their building. Um, it cost them about $200,000. And... Uh, and um, It'll, it'll take about five years to pay it back, and then they're looking at just $40,000 of, of ongoing savings as they continue to operate that hotel. And they've since gone on and set some pretty ambitious goals organizationally, but that, that's uh, money that, that goes back into a, into a nonprofit that provides really essential services in, in Toronto for a lot of families. I mean, in Vancouver, I should say. Um, thinking about processing and manufacturing, and again, um, really specific depending on the business. These are some guys from um, Woodland Flooring on Vancouver Island. They do high-end uh, flooring and uh, other millwork. Um, an, an example there that I wanted to share is Sunrise Soya. Um, and I think they actually have a plant here in, in Ontario as well as in Vancouver. They're headquartered there. They make uh, tofu. And um, they, they uh, put in a boiler economizer to allow them to capture some of the waste heat and preheat their water that they're using in their, in their processes. 
Um, and then they, they also installed some other technology, um, a gas analyzer and such. But they were looking at cost about $20,000 to, um, to install. And depending on, you know, gas prices fluctuate. But it was going to take a little under a year to sort of two years. And it's still, they're still uh, waiting it out um, for payback. So pretty quick return um, on an investment that they're paying a, a lot less for their natural gas on an annual basis um, going forward. And uh, these guys are also doing some, uh, making some pretty good headway in terms of waste reduction. I can talk about a little bit later. I know I'm rolling through pretty quickly, but I really just want to kind of fire these ideas at you. Feel free to um, uh, add to your list. Um, on, in transportation, one of the places that we, that we can focus is business travel. It's um, it's tough sometimes to to reduce the you know the number of times we get on the plane. But one organization we worked with uh, identified um, clients with which they already have a strong and standing relationship. And uh, the person in the organization who was uh, heading up the GHG management, she took the, she uh, made an appointment with the executive director and said, okay, so these are the people who you already know really well. Can we start there? And can you start to use teleconferencing and web conferencing with them and see how that goes? So that's how she got buy-in, uh, for them to start trying it instead of him getting on the plane all the time, um, to start testing it. And um, I need to, to hear back sort of the, the headway they've, they've made there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Van Hoot Coffee, actually, who we've just been working with recently, and I think that might be the coffee you were drinking out there earlier, or at least I saw their kind of stands. Um, they've made a commitment. They just, they just measured, or actually they're not quite finished, measuring their, their inventory, but they're really inspired by the process, and you start thinking about where the, where the opportunities are. And they used to all, this is the BC branch only, actually, they used to all fly to be together in Vancouver for the annual budgeting process. So, you know, five, six people flying in, staying at a hotel, and they've committed to do it all remotely. So they're going to figure out how to do it by teleconferencing and, um, and remote. So uh, inspiring there as well. Uh, on the fleet management side, um, we've, uh, we've learned a lot actually from Canadian Springs, who, who we've worked with. And uh, the guy we work with there sort of divides it into behavior and technology and maintenance and then, uh, and then drive trains. And he, he thinks that there's a lot of gains to be made just in driver education, anti-idling policies, um, you know, if you're, if you're driving those big trucks like they are, um, efficient gear shifting, slowing down. Um, I need to flip, but I think reducing from 120 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour will save you a lot in, in speeding tickets in, in BC, as well as achieve about a 21% uh, reduction in fuel consumption. Um, <coughs> maintenance, tire pressure, simple things that are, that are low cost, really. Um, there's, the, there's the driver education, but it can actually be pretty impactful. And they're also testing with some funding from NR Canada. They're testing... Um, uh, a big hybrid. So, if you do have a fleet, there's, uh, there's lots of opportunity there and pretty direct. Uh, it's a direct emission and, and pretty direct savings there. So this third party shipping idea, um, thinking about uh, when you're ordering and how much you're ordering um, is, one, is one place. I mentioned the Salt Spring Coffee example where they were looking at how their green beans were getting to Vancouver and realized that if they could change how they were ordering it and make sure they came all the way by freighter to Vancouver, there was a um, there is a real opportunity to reduce emissions there. Um, another smaller client that we work with, he's a wholesaler and distributor of, of uh, sort of environmentally friendly uh, beauty products. And he's sort of picked off his, his, again, top client, sort of thought about where he could have the most impact and the most reception, and has, um, is working with them so that they're ordering more or less frequently, and they're benefiting from lower shipping costs and some incentives there. He's leading with the, with the fact that he's working on his greenhouse gas emissions and getting great uptake. So he's building the relationships with them um, and also beginning to shift how he's, um, how he's shipping his goods. Um, another small example of packaging. You know, how are we packaging our, our goods and products? And we work with a, uh, a company that um, has, is working with actually a printer in the neighborhood and getting off cuts and shredding them and using them in the packaging rather than peanuts or bubble wrap or, you know, uh, material specifically made for, for packing. It fits with his sort of environmentally friendly product line, um, and it's also using a, a waste material. Um, another example, Tim Horn Creek Vineyards in uh, Okanagan Valley. 
uh, wine district in, in British Columbia. They um, started looking into this and thinking about their, their measurement and, and uh, emissions. And they're now testing a, a bottle that's 42% lighter. And you, you can feel it. They sent us one to kind of test. I think most of it is in kind of this, this is my theory, I'm a Sheldon engineer, but I think most of it is in that thick bump at the bottom of a, of a wine bottle. But it's, it's cheaper. So they're just saving flat out. They're paying less for their bottles, about $28,000 a year, 11%. They use about 30,000 cases of, of wine bottles a year. Um, and then they're also saving emissions because they can put, the, the bottle manufacturer can put more, more bottles because they're lighter on a single truck. And so they're saving, there are fewer trucks heading to all over British Columbia with empty bottles. And then there would be savings in emissions trucking the, the full bottles uh, back out. And so that's a pretty... Uh, cost of implementation, none. Uh, they are testing it, so breakage is the breakage is the last frontier for them. But uh, hopefully, it'll work out. Uh, employee commuting. So we've talked a little bit a little bit about this already. Um, it can be a substantial part of our, uh, especially for office space. Different, probably, if you're manufacturing and you're shipping a lot of product. Um, but it can be a big a big source. I mentioned Van City, that big uh, <coughs> union. Um, and uh, so there's lots to do just around public education. We can, if we're larger organizations and have the resources, provide metro, uh, metro passes. We can remove incentives sometimes by making it less easy, if, if we can, if we're located in a place where it's reasonable, making it less convenient to come and park your car and more convenient to, to, uh, make your, to uh, ride your bike, uh, bike lockers, et cetera. Um, then City started, to, and because it was a big part of their, their footprint, they started to look into this, and they wanted to understand from the staff, what are the barriers? And uh, a lot of the staff said, you know, I want to be able to get home in an emergency. If my kids call, you know, if I get a call from the school, my children are sick, or there's an emergency, that's why I drive, because I want that ability. So they instituted a policy where they have a guaranteed ride home, either in one of their, their company cars, or you can take a cab, and that's gone a long way to removing one of those barriers. And, it also gets to just the, the idea that asking your, asking your staff and engaging the, the employees, you'll get a lot of answers in terms of you know, why it's easy or difficult to implement a, a policy. Office paper. So I love that example about you know, reusing, double-siding, um, shifting to more post-consumer. Um, more and more offices are shifting right to 100% uh, post-consumer. Um, the, the premium you're paying and the printers, please speak up if you guys can speak to more recent sort of costs around if, for office paper um, to shift from, from sort of zero to 100%. I haven't checked these prices recently and it depends on volumes, but it can be between sort of 7 and 15% more, you know, plus or minus. It does, it depends on, on how much you're buying. Um, a couple of organizations we know, you know, try to. Um, sort of the, the amount they can serve, so the money they save by using less paper, they use toward the you know, added premium on, on um, post-consumer. Paper often isn't, you know, unless you're, unless you're a printer, say, it's often not a big source of emissions for an organization, but it's something that we all touch. And it's one of the, the easy wins and things we can easily think about. And so not bad in terms of engaging employees. <coughs> Waste reduction. Again, just thinking about what, what's, what's in our waste, worth doing an audit, we're thinking through where, what are our big sources of waste, and, and of course, first avoid trying, to, avoid trying to create it, and then increasing diversion. So again, looking for refillable, recyclable um, products, sourcing, it gets back to our purchasing policies, um, how we implement that, what we're thinking about, composting, if we're, if we're producing a lot of... Um, of organic waste back to Sunrise Soya, uh, looking into composting and trying to divert a lot of that waste. Gillingham Cabinets, a small cabinet manufacturer that we work with, first they switched to low VOC. They work a lot with particle board, I should say. They're making kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets. And first they switched to low uh, volatile organic compound particle board. So it's not as emitting much, as much. There's much more opportunities in terms of recycling for them. And they found somebody, to, to, a recycler, to take it away. And actually, it is going um, to a biomass burner at a local pulp mill. Um, so it's, uh, it's, being, it's being used as fuel rather than it was just going to the landfill um, before that. And that's over 90% of their waste um, 
right there, being, uh, being diverted back. Underlying everything really is engaging our, our staff and our, our teams um, about this, you know, up and up and down the chain, if you will. So just a few examples, sort of t- tips and tricks that we're certainly using or, or learning, I should say. Um, the more companies that we the, we work with, the more great ideas we collect. And I know I keep using Van City as a uh, as an example, but here's sort of a. Again, just creating a bit of a campaign and, and putting a name on it. And this is one example. They worked with our local utility um, designing this. I like, there's Marks and Spencer is another big company. And I like they have plan A and then it's like because there is no plan B. So it's, you know, fun and it engages their, it, uh, it's both an external and an internal campaign. Um, a green team. Do you guys already have green teams or, you know, whatever you want to call them kind of set up? And Yeah. Yeah, so that can be helpful, and it can distribute the labor. And then you don't also feel like the company nay, as uh, one of our clients said. <laughs> so like, getting tired of feeling like the guy, you know. And people would, hi- you know, go by his office and hiding their disposable coffee cups, and you know, feeling guilty and people like that. So the more you can, the more you can share the share the load, the better. Speaking of which, not to name names. So another fun thing these guys did is. Uh, they're a big law firm, 300 lawyers. They're in an office. They have no scope one, for an example. And um, they instituted being lawyers an office supply amnesty day. And uh, he did say that coffee and donuts, it was all about the coffee and donuts that were in the room, that you had to bring your unused office supplies. But they just put a call out. Bring all your supplies that you have hiding in your drawers and this and that. And, and uh, they saved, um, in the first one, I think they did, did these, Two of these in one year, and they they figured they saved you know three to four thousand uh, dollars, just stuff coming out of the woodwork. Uh, not to mention that they have sort of now a veritable museum of office stuff that they hadn't seen in years, dictaphones, etc. Um, but it was actually as importantly a way to engage employees and, and get them talking about their their efforts and thinking about their uh, their resource use uh, up and down up and down the chain. And then if you're not the boss. And you want to engage the boss. Um, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, but just the importance, again, of articulating the business case. Does everybody know who he is? I'm totally dating myself. Boss He's Boss Hogg from, boss from, from, yeah, from the Dukes of Hazard. I have some young punks in the crowd. Yeah, so make the business case. And lead with that if you need to. You know, if it's, if it's what we need to be doing on an environmental front, you know, maybe we lead with that second. If, if you need to get buy-in, uh, buy-in maybe you lead first with, with the bottom line and the, and the brand lift, and that it's, it's, uh, the market is shifting, and so the economy we need to be there. Um, and recruit champions. You know, find, find the people uh, higher up in senior management who care, who are interested, uh, the same young lawyer, he identified a senior partner who um, he decided to tackle in terms of electronic filing. You can imagine the paper uh, that a law firm sort of uses and goes through. And he's been working with him, teaching him how to store PDFs in the internal filing system. It sounds so simple to most of us, but this guy is used to his binders across all one wall and piled up in his office. And, uh, and he led with the case of how much time it takes the lawyer to find something in all that. So he was working in the, with the senior partner in the theory that once he got him, other people would, would sort of fall into line. So that's a small, a small example, but a way, uh, a way to tackle things. And then, again, tackle a few easy wins and then celebrate them. Back to internal communications. And Philip, I love your idea about you know, the more you can share the data in different ways and get people engaged with it, then you get more buy-in. You get, you get employees seeing the opportunities for, for further reductions um, and feeling good about the headway that they're making. So I know I walked through those pretty quickly, but I hope, I hope there were some ideas in there for you, or I hope you were able to better hone yours and add a couple um, to your list.